Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to Star Control 2. Alright. We have things that we can buy. What with having 5,000 credits. I am interested in purchasing new technology. The technology we are now offering includes plans for building improvements to your planet landers, which make them resistant to hostile alien life forms. I could have used that a while ago. I would like to buy the technology you described. Our reinforcement procedures on your landers are complete. Why, thank you. Now, provided your crew will stop putting their hands out the windows. They have to check that it's ra if it's be raining. better protected against hostile life forms. The technology we are now offering includes blueprints which show how to increase your lander's cargo space to double its present volume. I could use that too. <clears throat> Alright, but first, guys, um, we're gonna have to seal up those windows, put up signs, keep all uh, um, hands and feet inside the vehicle at all times, that kind of thing. Uh, if we don't, they, they might not sell me more stuff. But uh, for now, I'd like to buy the technology I you described. This makes your resource gathering more cost effective, Captain. I hope the so too. The technology we are now offering includes blueprints which show how to add double capacity fuel tanks. Oh, if only I had some of those right now. I would like to buy the technology you describe. We hope that these improved tanks will make more module slots available on your flagship. Oh yes. Which you can fill with other, more useful equipment. The technology we are now offering includes plans for improving the rate of fire on your lander's stun ray bolt beamer gun. Could have used that before as well. And, uh... I'm looking at you guys back there in the crew. No, we're not going to have space to build that bondage dungeon you've been asking me for. Sorry. Maybe next After time. some wild game, hmm? Yes. Well, the changes we made should really make a difference. Why, thank you. Unless, of course, that wiring went in backwards. Don't in make me shoot case, you. You won't be able to shoot at all. Or take off, for that matter. Don't worry, Captain. We stand behind our work. If something goes wrong, just bring it back to us, and we'll fix it. Pronto. The technology we are Assuming now offering we can get back. includes details for building modifications to your planet landers, which make them resistant to I was to actually kind of hoping for some other technology, but okay. With the addition of these safety belts, and heavy-duty shock absorbers. Your lander occupants should be much safer when an untimely earthquake strikes. Thank you. The job is complete. Your landers are ready. The technology we are now offering includes plans for adding auto-tracking modules, which improve the aim of all your weapons. I like the sound of that. You are preparing for a mighty battle. You could say that. Well, let me give you some advice. You should consider using multiple tracking modules, since this will greatly hmm. improve your aim. All right, However, keep that in mind. Never add more than three to your ship. Any more would be useless. All right. The technology. We are now offering includes plans for adding improvements to your planet landers, which make them resistant to inclement planet weather. All right, I was still hoping for some non-lander uh, um, technology, but okay. A little superconducted spray paint. Really? Presto. That's it. Your lander can sustain a direct hit by a lightning bolt without risking the passengers inside, usually. Since the job Thanks. is so easy that a nymph could do it, I expect all your Ooh. landers could, could, could be treated in Could we get hour. some nymphs here to help us then? I'm fine with that. Is everything you need to know 
to assemble modifications to your planet landers, which make them resistant to planetary hotspots. Okay. I would like to buy the technology you described. With these new ablative plasma heat shields, your crew will be substantially safer on hot worlds. But like all our lander modifications, this protection is not perfect. So remain cautious. Okay. Since the changes to your landers are straightforward, your lander should be fitted with the heat shields by the time you return to your ship. The technology I appreciate we that. are now offering is plans for building Hellbore cannons. Oh, I like the sound of a that. A weapon much more destructive than a simple blaster. I like the sound of that. I would like to buy the technology you described. Captain, just a suggestion. Okay. Hellbore cannons are energy gulpers. So unless you want to have a long delay between shots, I would suggest you add dynamos or even Shiva furnaces to your ship. The technology... I, I don't know anything about Shiva furnaces, offering, though. ...includes details on how to develop Shiva Furnace Modules. Of course. ...which generate energy for your combat batteries twice as fast as your standard dynamos. Okay. That sounds good. I'd like those. you will appreciate this new module, Captain. With it, you should be able to destroy and devastate twice as fast as before. Commander, that is the limit oh. of the new technology we can offer you. Lame. If I may say so, you have been an excellent customer. Of course Thank I have. You. You're welcome. Uh, I would. I wish to buy information. How wonderful, Captain. Now we are in for the lengthy conversations. <clears throat> I will pay for useful data on alien races. The Pekunk are a mystical yeah, we know about them. of the Yehat species, who left their bird brothers long ago. They look like pterosaurs, though. in the Kruger and Geithless stars. At the present time, the Pekunk are defending themselves against the era. I think your information's a little out of date. been commanded to attack the happy birds by Dogar and Kazan. The Pekunk may be unwilling to make a formal alliance with you, but we have confidence that if you explain yourself honestly, they will help your efforts against the Irkwan. Yeah, your information is a little bit out of date there, buddy. Uh, we will pay for useful data on alien races again. The creatures again. presently fighting the Irkwan are called the Koran. Yeah, we've encountered them. They are an Irkwan subspecies who split off from the main species many thousands of years ago. Mm. Their present fight is a ritual reenacting of a major difference of opinion between That's two pretty major. rival Urquan leaders after the Urquan overwhelmed their slave masters, the Dinyare. The mm. Kora are immune to reason, having long ago lost the ability to see their situation Objectively, they live in a self-maintained paradox. To ensure their safety and security, the Kora fight an endless battle against all other sentient species. Huh. Well, that sounds bad. I must warn you about some very bad people. Such as? Is this worth so many credits? Yeah, really. Ask yourself, I assure you, okay. it is. The creatures are called the Druge, and they are a callous and evil race. Really? They care for nothing but profit and personal gain through unfair Unlike you. mercantile exchanges. Why are you looking at me <laughs> like that, Captain? It is not appropriate. As I was saying, these wicked creatures will try to sell you commodities at unreasonably low prices. Oh, they almost give away fuel. Do not 
fall for their tricks. There are hidden costs, secret terrors. So that you may avoid them, I will tell you that their main trade world is Zeta. Oh, I, I will be sure to avoid them. Why are you smiling? N no Captain? reason. No reason at all. Mm -mm. I will pay for useful data on alien races. The Bervixies race evolved on the planet uh -huh. Arcturus One. They lived there in a relatively benevolent manner. Yeah. Until the Kola came oh. and destroyed them during the course of two or three unfortunate days. That sounds bad. The Druge were largely responsible for the Kola finding the Bervixies. Really? You see, I guess they are kind of bad, then, huh? seas were in long distance, hyperwave contact with a race known simply as the Keg. For decades, the Keg and the Burdick Seas traded now I know much how to pronounce valuable that. information until the Keg came under attack by an invading race who you may know as the Kora. The Gag warned the Burbick Seas that the Kora located races by their hyperwave transmissions and that they had already discovered the radiations from the Druge. When the Burbick Seas were kind enough to warn the Druge that a hostile alien race was homing in on their hyperwave radiations, the Druze shut down oh, that was all smart their enough. transmitters and erected a powerful oh. hyperwave beacon on the surface of the Burdick Sea's moon. That's less good. The yeah, yeah, they're course, definitely not nice people. The poor Burdick Seas and sadly destroyed them all. Yep. All right. Now I'm I'm believing you a little bit more about the Druze. Uh, I will continue to pay for useful data on alien races. The Pradash are an yeah, we met them. stubborn and thick-skinned species who reside in the Draconis and Apodis star systems. They have little or no respect for anything but force, which they admire greatly. Well, makes it easier to, to fight the them. Pradash your friends, you should consider killing most, but not all of uh -huh. them. In addition, they guard some kind of sacred relic. At Why do I get the feeling that I'm going to need that? Zeta Draconis. Though we do not know the true nature really? of this artifact. Would that information be valuable? The Dash homeworld is at Delta Draconis. I'd be more than happy to give you some of that information uh, once I discover what that item is. After the war. The Chenjesku and the Mernherm chose to be slave shielded on the Chenjesu's homeworld at Procyon. We suspect that they are melding their two species to form some kind of new hybrid race. A race which may well be powerful enough to destroy the Urquan single handed Well, that would be good to get on get on our side. By our calculations. This oh. process will take many decades, if not centuries. Well, maybe we can get Should a you time warp with to talk to them. We recommend you invest in a hyperwave broadcasting system, which is powerful enough to penetrate the shield around their world. Well, as coincidence might have it, we picked one of those up from the Bervixie's moon. The Micon are using this time while the Urquan have their attention elsewhere to expand their sphere of influence as fast as possible. Hmm, I wonder why. The Micon colonize planets by launching tough spore pods from orbit and injecting them under the planet's surface. Yes, Months that causes later, damage. After the spores have grown hundreds of thick, fibrous tendrils under the planet's crust, the tendrils suddenly thrust up out of the planet and create huge calderas. Not incidentally, filling the planet's atmosphere with the Micon's preferred gases, clouds of superheated steam and sulfuric acid. Yeah, I guess, uh, I, uh, let me guess that that causes quite, uh, quite a bit of destruction for the planet and anyone who lives there, doesn't it? Following the end of the war, the Androsynth 
began experimenting with interdimensional fatigue. I guess that didn't go well for them. related to your faster than light drive, but involves dimensions far more alien than hyperspace. Yeah, we've been there. They had just made a major breakthrough when they were suddenly wiped out by a race called the Ors, hmm. who appeared seemingly out of nowhere. Actually, we don't know what the Ors did to the Ancrescent. They're just all gone. That's creepy. The Arilulanle are a mysterious race of IDF beings. Interdimensional fatigue, I assume? IDF yep. meaning interdimensional fatigue. They do not reside in this galaxy, or in fact, anywhere in this universe. Making them yet Why, it still is more creepy. That the Arilu are rarely seen <clears throat> far from the Columbia star group. They do make regular, secret visits to your world. How do you know so? For centuries. Ever since Earth was stayed shielded, they have focused their attention on the humans aboard the Starbase, many of whom are now members of your crew. Huh. Though the Arilu Lanle always smile and are never overtly hostile, we believe that they have a secret agenda which somehow involves your planet Earth. These secret plans may or may not cause grief and woe to you Earthlings. So, so they they have a, a deep interest in our world and so you're saying they may have a secret agenda about us. It's an amazing leap you're making there, buddy. Alright, uh, more information, please. Just under 20 years ago, the brave and suicidal show Fixie Annihilated I their fix species that if by exploding any of them a living. precursor device, some kind of bomb, in the interior of their sun. The resulting storm of solar flares cooked the light off the show Pixie homeworld, and incinerated over a hundred Urquan dreadnoughts which had just entered the system to conquer the show Pixie in actuality. There oh. are still at least hey. a dozen show Pixie left alive in the galaxy. Excellent. One or two are at Delta Gorno, guarding the dead hulk of their once beautiful world. Others can be found in Vox space. Do we have to go talk to the Vox? I guess we're gonna have to talk to the Vox. Alright, I will pay for more useful info data on alien races. Are a mostly non solid oh, sentient hey. race who live in a gas giant at Beta Cori. Hey, that's good and information. We recently sold them a self replicating exploration probe, which has somehow turned hostile and attacked everything somehow. it detects. If such encounters have angered you, Captain, please do not address your so concerns your... to us. We your possess a form product. of of damages authorized by a Slyandro speaker Damn it. and are in no way responsible for the situation. Well, could you tell us how to, like, stop them? The cowardly staff live at the single yeah. planet orbiting Yeah, we, we know that now. Groups. They do not actually live on uh -huh. their world. Yeah. Rather, they reside on its airless moon. We know that now, the too. Reason? A xenomorphic species which craves the sweet flavored flesh of the Staffy has been transported to the surface of their planet and makes every attempt to devour the poor Staffy. I am certain that the Staffy would be forever in your debt if you were to eliminate these creatures from their planet. What? Yeah, we've, we've done that already. You fear the alien creatures will find you a treat also? No, not anymore. Yeah. Our data reveals the beasts are not interested in your species. 
so Should not interested that they didn't even move when encountering us. Console, you will need to know the secret Staffy cipher. A password, which is Huffy, Muffy, Guffy. How do you know that? Oh, right, they've, they've almost certainly encountered a Spothy before. Like you Earthlings, when the war with the Urquan was lost, the Sirene... Ah, here's one that we wanted to know. ...slave shielded. Their new world is at Beetlejuice. The Sirene Starbase is crewed by the Starship Commanders and crew who were decommissioned at the end of the war. Though the Sirene hate the Urquan with a vengeance, they are unlikely to offer you assistance unless you reveal to them the truth behind the tragedy of their original home. So do you know about the truth? Sira, which was destroyed oh, you do. by the hey. birth of a Micon Deep Child a century ago. Oh, hey, that is useful information. Alright. Uh, I will pay for useful data on alien races still. When the still. Urquan entered Gamma Serpentis, the home star of the Yehat, their queen made a sudden change of allegiance. Do you know why? And allied with I'd the like Urquan to know why. hierarchy. Impossible. They became Urquan combat thralls. This act was viewed by most Yehat starship officers as ultimately dishonorable, the desperate act of a corrupt regent to maintain her throne. The Yehot shame was greatly magnified by the Shofixi show of courage when they destroyed their own star system to slow down the Urquan Armada. Captain, you have heard all that we have to say about aliens indigenous to this region. Oh, thank you. Should we learn more in the near future, we shall be certain to sell it to you. I'm not sure if we uh, find out if, if there is anything for them to uh, that comes up later or not. Um, the uh, one of the the most important things is the Sirene information. I'm not sure if you can find out that any other way. But uh, please sell us historical information. Almost twenty five thousand of your years ago, there existed near this region of space, an association of star-faring races called the Sentient Milieu. This group formed over several thousand years to mutually enrich their respective cultures well, that sounds to good. provide what would happen a to safe crash for emerging sentient species and to afford themselves a degree of protection from external hostilities via military alliance. Who's in this group? Of the seven most active milieu members, the most famous race, indeed, you know them well, Do Captain, I really? Were the oh. Well, I guess that didn't go uh, go so well. Um, clearly, if, uh... Because that, that certainly doesn't sound anything like the Urquan today. Uh, can you sell us more historical information? The Urquan evolved on a harsh planet orbiting a star outside this region of space. They were solitary predators, like your brain mantis captain, or polar bear, who had a very limited set of social behaviors, most of which dealt with sex. Since they oh, those had are to pretty important for survival against many physically superior species, the Urquan evolved intelligence and tool use in much the same way as your own species. The Urquan and yet they were also learned to master solid. their fierce territoriality to build a cooperative oh, planetary culture. When the Urquan were discovered by the Taeo, they had just begun exploring their solar system in crude atomic vehicles. Although the Urquan attacked what they thought to be an invader. Well, oh, that's Tal handy. Well, that's, I mean, that's patient. admirable of the Talos. They explained the purpose of the sentient milieu and offered the Urquan membership. The Urquan recognized the benefits that such a system provided, and once more conquered 
the hunt you beast within themselves. That's a that's to admirable as well. Productive members of the milieu. This lasted for several thousands of years. I guess at some point they gave up conquering their internal hunting beast. Uh, what more historical information can you sell us? Just over 20,000 years ago, when your ancestors were learning to chart the course of the moon and stars on animal horns, the sentient milieu spanned 500 light years and included the membership of a hundred worlds. Were those independent like worlds or other star colonies? They had discovered ruins and relics of a far more ancient culture. You're talking about the precursors, huh? Which your yep. species calls the precursors. Explorers from many species spent their lives trying to piece together this ancient mystery. But of all races, the Urquan were the most bold adventurers. Their scouts, flying single ships, penetrated far into uncharted space and landed a million worlds. On one such mission, a young Urquan made planet fall on a small, light-bearing alien world to identify some anomalous energy readings occasionally a sign of precursor installations. Instead, the Earth One found a small, hideous creature, a Dinyari. That Before sounds bad. Before the scout was able to defend itself, the Dinyari creature oh. took control of the Earth so One's mind hmm. and commanded the scout to place the Dinyari aboard the Urquan's ship, along Ew. with hundreds of its evil brood. Mm. Then, the Urquan returned to the heart of the milieu, landing on its capital planet. Within hours, every resident of the planet was a Dinyari slave. Within a month, Dinyari compelled starships and spread the evil, sulky creatures too. across the entire milieu. Oh, do you have any more information on that? Because uh, I'd like to know more. When the Dinyari took control of the milieu, one race fought back. Oh, oh that's good. Itake. These I'm, I'm gonna call them Kuala Kuala. creatures were silicon-based life forms, oh, like but the bore little resemblance to the modern Chenjesu. Taeo were natural immune to the Dinyari psychic compulsion. They were unaffected by the creature's well, power. Handy for them. And the Dinyari would not permit anyone to Maybe not so much. outside their control. So they ordered the remaining races of the Lunyu to attack and destroy the Taeo home planet. This planet was one of the few milieu worlds located in this region of space. Oh, really? Do you know where? I believe you call their star... Oh, that's Delta handy. Volpecule. Their home... I guess we'll have to visit there. ...revolving about the second planet. I'm sad to say that the Taeo were, indeed, Eliminated. However, at the time of their devastation, they had completed a device which they thought would give other races psychic immunity like their own. What huh. happened to this device? This shield? It's hard to say. Maybe it was destroyed in the attack on their homeworld. Well, I guess we have another mission. Maybe. We'll not. definitely have to visit there. Uh, what more historical information do you have? In the Dinyare's new empire, the Urquan were the favored slaves. This is probably because the Urquan were the most psychically sensitive, the most easily compelled. As the centuries of Dinyare dominance passed, what was once the sentient milieu deteriorated and degenerated into a great galactic gulag. Alien races which did not serve with the efficiency and speed demanded by the Dinyare were ruthlessly burned from the faces of their world. 
agents. The agents of this genocide were inevitably the Dinyari's favorite pet, the Urquan. After almost 2,500 years of unrelenting Dinyari control, there were only four living member races of the once great sentient milieu. Uh, which four were those? By this point, the Dinyari had used genetic manipulation mm. to split the Urquan into two subspecies. The green Urquan. Scientists, technicians, and administrators. Oh. Who were responsible for maintaining oh, those the Urquan that we're familiar with the structure of the Dinyari civilization and the Black Urquan, who filled the ranks of basic laborer and combat soldier. Then, a chance discovery by an Urquan named Kazerza led to the violent overthrow of the Dinyari slave empire. You know, I'm kind of curious if, uh, um, the sentient milieu, milieu was, uh, it did have some territory in our section of space, and, uh, you know, I mean, all of the races that we're dealing with are in our section of space. They were, at some point, you know, non-space, uh, uh, you know, they weren't advanced enough to get into space. Did the Dinyari just ignore them? That's interesting to wonder about. Let's get some more historical information. The Urquan named Kazerza was a green, a researcher specializing in repairing the mental damage inflicted by long-term exposure <laughs> to the Dinyari's psychic compulsion. By this point in history, the Dinyari had grown lax in their dominance. And oh yeah, that, that's occasion, always a bad idea. Accidentally permitted their slaves moments of self-direction. Kazetza was able to use those few scattered minutes to compose a theory. From its observations, Kazetza realized that when a slave died, the Dinyari disconnected from the slave's mind, lest it too be dragged down to death. First, the Urquan scientist uncovered the fact that when a slave underwent great pain, oh, I think I can see where this goes. Temporarily disconnected. But that the degree of pain had to be extreme, nearly lethal. Kazerza chose its moment carefully. It waited until it was near an open transmission unit. Then, in a short moment of mental freedom, the Urquan injected itself with a dose of acidic poison, sending incredible waves of pain through its Ouch. long body. In the few moments before its death, Kazerza was able to wrest control of the transmitter to send word of its discovery across the planet and into space as well. Before the Dinyari knew what was happening, Urquan everywhere were hacking at their own bodies with chunks of glass, burning themselves horribly, doing anything that would give them the few seconds of freedom necessary to find the nearest Dinyari and crush the breathing creature. As they gained longer and longer periods of control, the Urquan developed new tools and weapons to destroy their evil masters. The most gruesome of these devices was the excruciator, a mechanism which was inserted directly into the brain and generated a constant stream of agony. The Dinyari could not bring themselves to make the necessary mental connection with these tortured Urquan, 
They were slaughtered by the thousands. The Urquan slave revolt was won. Yeah, I don't want to think about that. That that how would they be able to function in that much pain? When the last Urquan was free of psychic compulsion, when the last free Dinyare was dead, the combined might of the Urquan star fleets met in orbit above the Dinyare homeworld. They had come together to make two important decisions. First, how to punish the few frightened Dinyare left below on the planet's surface. I'm guessing ultimate destruction. Second, how to ensure that never again would the Earth One be made slaves. The first decision was made swiftly. The Dinyare would not be allowed to die. Oh. Ah, that was too kind a fate. Instead, the creatures would be genetically modified into some sentience. They would become dumb animals. These low creatures would be further debased by serving the Urquan for all eternity in the most demeaning way the Urquan could imagine, acting as translators making physical contact with other species, whom the Urquan now considered grossly inferior to themselves and revolting. The second decision, how to ensure their freedom permanently, You're gonna make me pay for caused that, great turmoil. Ah, so, the Dinyari, they, they, uh, they were modified into the talking pets, huh? And then there was what the uh, Erelu mentioned about finding a talking pet. Yeah, this this doesn't look like it's gonna go go well. All right, please sell us more historical information. Following the successful Urquan slave revolt, the Urquan met to decide how to ensure their freedom. The Green Urquan, who called themselves the Kazertza in honor of the Urquan who triggered the revolt wish to establish the path of now and forever sounds like a song title which required that all other sentient species must become slaves of the urquan or be forever imprisoned beneath an impenetrable well we know where that was shield leading the opposition to this plan was Kora, a charismatic fleet officer Kora proposed a simpler alternative, the Eternal Doctrine. Simply put, this scheme called for the systematic eradication of all sentient life in the universe, aside from the Iroquois. Hmm. Captain, I don't like that these idea. positions seem to you extreme yeah. or unwarranted, you must remember that the Urquan had been unwilling slaves doesn't for doesn't exactly millennia, justify and it. each of them had to remain in agony for years in order to defeat the Dinyare. The followers of Kazetza and Kora were all on the brink of madness. Yeah, but they could have recovered but by neither now. side would submit. And so they fought a bloody civil war. You're gonna tell me about the Civil War now, right? This is the last historical item okay. we have for sale. The Civil War between the Green Urquan, the followers of Kazet Zah, and their opponents, the Death Dealing Kora, lasted for decades. It is likely that they would have annihilated each other were it not for a chance discovery by Kazet Zah, a precursor oh. battleship. The vessel was huge, many times the size of the Urquan's vessels. The precursor ship sliced through the Kora forces in days. The Kora were defeated. However, in their victory, the Kazetsa were humble. They realized that there was a chance 
Yeah, of the two, one might be wrong and one might be right. Instead of destroying the Korra, so. the Kazerza let them go, directing them to make their way through the stars, traveling against the spin of the galaxy. The Kazerza would travel in the opposite direction, and when the two Urquan forces met, they would fight again in ritual combat, with the precursor battleship given to the winner. Captain, this is happening here, and now. The Kazerza, the Urquan who enslaved her, are fighting their ritual battle against the Kora, in a large area centered near the Craterous constellation. Mm. If the Kora win this battle, Captain, the Kazerza will stand aside and let them kill us all. We believe it is your destiny to prevent this from happening. And yet you're still going to sell me the, uh, you, you still are only going to sell me this information rather than give it to me in order to give me a leg up. Thanks! You know you can't use these credits if you're dead. Uh, I wish to buy information about current events. While you probably believe that the Shook yeah. 60 are extinct, having caused their sun to flare with a device what? identical to the Utwig super bomb. You didn't tell us anything about the, the Utwig. is not so simple. We already kind of know about yet this. exists a chance to resuscitate this meta marsupial species, though it will not be easy. Hmm. The problem at hand seems simple. Bring together two Shofixti of different sexes, and the carnal gymnastics proceed. Given the short gestation and maturation time of the Shofixti, you will have thousands of the creatures in ten years and millions in twenty. How did they survive? Being a male of the species is easier than fluff. Simply visit Easier the Shofixi's blasted star system at Delta Gorno. Captain Tanaka, or its sibling, Katana... Its sibling? I already told him that it was a male. A warning. These warriors are old and fly in barely functional ships. If they mistakenly identify you as the enemy, do not return fire. Okay. Retreat and try to talk with them on their own level. The All right. females of the species will be more difficult to obtain. The only supply of such remaining in the galaxy is at Alpha Cherenkov 1, included as part of General Zex's bizarre and beloved menagerie. Fortunately for you, Captain, Zex is considered, well, perverse by his fellow box. This is because Zex actually enjoys... So he's a tentacle monster who enjoys watching people have sex. To gotcha! To the show fixy females, you will have to appease Zex. Or kill him. I think I'd rather kill him. He is a fox, after all. Ah, uh, information about current events, please. Dear Kwan, are presently at war yeah, with we, a race we know that. called the Kora. They are fighting within a large, spherical region of space, centered around the crater of star group. Okay, yeah. Although it is probably too early to tell, it would appear that the Kora are winning. I don't understand how. The, the, well... I'd have to go back to Super Melee and try it with the uh, the two of them, but I think the Urquan generally can destroy a Korra vessel. No doubt you are familiar with an alien race called the Umga. I haven't met them in the game the yet, no. Constellation. While they are renowned for their potent and often cruel sense of humor, they have outdone themselves in recent you don't say. years. Specifically. They have used an unusual hyperwave caster to impersonate oh. the Ilrath gods, Dilgar, yeah, I think we heard Jason. about this, didn't we? When the Ilrath began tuning in 
be the voices of their gods, of their hyperwave receivers. The priest caste was understandably skeptical. Yeah, that makes sense. And counseled their many followers to ignore the blasphemous. Mm, I wonder what happened then. However, in a surprise move, the majority of the Orad then rose up and slaughtered the entire priest caste. The wow. reasons for this ghastly move included overtaxation, lack of quality death in ceremony, and the general feeling that the priests had made Dogar and Kazan's pronouncements overly complex. Hmm. Interesting. All right, let's buy some more information about current events. As you know, there are weaknesses yeah. in the division between dimensions. For example, your vessel uses such weaknesses to enter hyperspace. However, there are other weak spots in the galaxy. You're gonna tell us about the one that we already know about, right? Different dimensions. One such portal exists nearby, between the yep. Chandra Sekar and Kolum Bay constellations. The portal opens only a short time each month, starting on the 17th. So that's another way Since to find out about that. Never entered the portal. We can give no more information I wonder why you haven't. on this subject. As you are probably aware, Urquan starships, yeah. you call them dreadnoughts, I believe, possess effective self-annihilation circuits. Ah, uh, you're going to tell us about the crash. Prevent right? other yep. races from reverse engineering Urquan technological secrets. However, we have become aware of a shipwrecked dreadnought which has remained largely intact. You Actually, will find really didn't. the remains of the ship on the surface of a blue world orbiting Alpha Pavonis. We suspect you will find at least one item of interest there. Possibly two. So, of course, he's referring to the warp pod and the talking pet. You may have noticed the presence of an increasingly large Still blame you for this. red probe vessels, which move with great Still speed your and fault. attack relentlessly. Still your fault. We are sorry to say yeah. that this is our catalog item 2418B. Do not blame us. We are not responsible for this violent folly. The product is not being used in a correct manner. So how do we correct it? Should you wish to confront the actual wrongdoers, we suggest you search the planets in Beta Corby for the probe's owners. Hmm. Yeah, we heard about that from the uh, other bit of information. You know, you're kind of telling us the same thing over and over again in some Not cases. more than 50 years ago, the Druze were informed by yeah. the now extinct Bovixis race of a powerful alien nation called oh, okay. the Utvig. The Utvig, Why didn't you tell the us Bovixis this the... explained were pleasant, the alien sophisticated list creatures, but they were also terminally depressed and often spoke about ending their lives by activating a super weapon, some kind of gigantic bomb, which they had found on one of their worlds. Zeta Hyades 6B, I think it was. The Druze recognized the description of the bomb as a precursor planetary tool, which indeed was an explosive device of unrivaled power, and they set out to make it their own. Though the revolting, criminal, insidious Druze oh, please describe them some more. leave their sphere of influence, it encompasses Algol, Almagest, and the Persei stars. They made a special trip on this occasion to the Aquarii constellation, where they made contact with the Utwig. There is a device commonly known as the Ultron. Is it now in your possession? Ah, I see. The Druze sold this device to the Utwin. Yeah, no, it's not in our possession. Explaining that it was a precursor personal magnifier, which would enrich the lives of their entire culture in too many ways to describe specifically. The Utwig 
I am sorry to say. Fell for the Druge's foul ruse and snapped up the Ultron immediately. Fortunately for us all, Liutwig did not pay the Druge's requested price, the Super Bomb, and instead gave him a collection of historical oddments and genuine artifacts. Of course, the Druge which took it. To this day, the Druze are trying to unload on unwary buyers. Yeah, we're gonna need some of those, aren't we? Well, let's get some more information. Utwig, who live in the Aquari constellation, have grown very depressed of late. This is like more than Commander Hayes had to say, too. Ultron, sold to them by the felonious Druze. As a consequence, they are morose and melancholic, and will probably be unwilling to help you fight the Urquan. If you wish to gain them... Now, Commander Hayes, time to make some Prozac. We recommend that you acquire the broken Ultron, as if it ever worked, and find some suitable replacement parts. Huh. Our information indicates that you could find these items in three different places. Oh, this is handy. Places. A rosy sphere at the Druze trade world. Yep, we're gonna need an aqua to trade with them, aren't we? Somewhere in Fredash space, and a clear spindle, which is currently uh, 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 in the possession not currently. of the Pekunk. Captain, that was oh, the okay. last current event we have for sale. We regret to say. That you have exhausted our supply of genuinely Well, maybe you should sell me some other stuff cheaply. However, we do have many thousands of useless Oh, packs. wow. That, we would gladly like sell me. you at a substantial discount. Are you interested? Hmm. Oh. We thought not. I, I, I like... I like... useless information. I'd like to buy some fuel. As you know, we carry a large supply of fuel on board. How convenient. Which is compatible with your engine system. We will be happy to sell this One credit per fuel unit. Nice. At a cost of one credit per fuel unit. How much fuel do you wish to purchase? Fill her up! Fill all my fuel tanks to maximum capacity. Fuel transferred to your vessel. We still have a lot of credits left over. I'm done buying for now. Very well then. Uh, goodbye, Trade Master. It has been a pleasure dealing with you, Captain. We look forward to your next visit. Okay, so that took a lot of time. But... For good reason. Now we won't have to deal with them very much. Although I will probably visit them again for some fuel. Um, I think that we will uh, go ahead and end the episode here. And in the next one, it's time to upgrade our ship. <laughs> yes, upgrade the ship. We'll see you next time, everyone.